So our first slide was on simplifying rational expressions, and this slide is on multiplying and dividing rational expressions. Let's start with number four. We're asked to multiply 4a over 5b times 15b squared over uh, 16a cubed. And there's a couple different strategies when looking at a multiplication problem like this. One strategy is just to multiply across in the top and across in the bottom and then simplify. But another strategy is to cross cancel. So what I think I'm going to do is implement uh, one strategy in number four and then the opposite strategy in number five. It doesn't matter which strategy you use, either will yield the same answer if done correctly. So I think for this first one, I'm just going to simply multiply across on the top and again on the bottom. So let's focus solely on the numerator. So 4a times 15b squared is 60ab squared. Now let's focus on the denominator. 5b times 16a cubed is 80a cubed b. Notice how as I stated the answer, I grouped everything in alphabetical order. Even though the b came first in the denominator, I said a cubed b, just to maintain that convention of alphabetical order. Now what I'm going to do is simplify starting with the numbers. Uh, 60 over 80 is 6 over 8 or 3 fourths. An a over an a cubed leaves me with an a squared in the denominator. And then b squared over b leaves me with a b in the numerator. So the final answer here is 3b over 4a squared. Let's move to number 5. In number 5, we're told to multiply 8t squared s over 5r squared times 15sr over 12t cubed s squared. Now, this time I'm going to implement cross-canceling. I could do it exactly the way I did it in number 4, but just to show you a different alternative, I'm going to cross-cancel. Now, a lot of students like cross-canceling, but there's one drawback, and that is things get real messy real fast. So you've got to be really neat about the way that you do this. And you can't obliterate things when you cross them out. You have to just gently, gently cross them out. So let's start. The first thing that I'm focusing on are the 5 and the 15. That's just what my eye was drawn to first. And I'm going to cross those out, and that's going to leave me with a 3 on the top. So I'm going to gently cross those out, and I'm going to put a 3 on the top, and I'm going to write it in a circle to remind me that it's still there. Now, the 8 and the 12, the 8 and the 12 reduce by, by 4 is to 2 thirds. So the 8 becomes a 2, and the 12 becomes a 3. So the 8 becomes a 2, and the 12 becomes a 3. Now, the 3 on the top from the 15 and the 3 on the bottom from the 12, those are going to cancel out. And I think we're done with the numbers. Now I'm going to focus on the t squared on the top left and the t cubed on the bottom right. So those are going to cancel, leaving me with a t on the bottom. And again, if you write it in a little circle, it's going to be a reminder that it's there. <clears throat> and now I'm going to move over to the s. The s on the top left and the s squared on the bottom right leave me with an s on the bottom right. And now I'm going to move, continue to move over to the top right. On the top right, there's an S, and that's going to cancel with the S that I just put a circle around. So that's just going to go away completely. And now I'm left with the R on the top right with the R squared on the bottom left. And those are going to cancel, leaving me with an R on the bottom. So yes, cross-canceling is fun, but if you're not kind of neat about it, then you're not going to have any clue what just happened. It's just going to look like a big mess on your page. So... I think with a little bit of organization, it's not so bad. So what is the only thing that I have left in the numerator? It looks to me like it's just the number 2, and that's it. So let's write 2. And now let's focus on the things that are left in the denominator. And it looks like it's just uh, an R and a T. So keeping it alphabetical, we're going to say 2 over RT. And this is our final answer. Now let's move to number 6. In number 6, we're asked to divide... 4x squared y over 15a cubed b cubed divided by 2xy squared over 5ab cubed. And what's really critical that you remember here is that 
dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to turn this into a multiplication problem by reciprocating the second fraction. Okay, now that I've rewritten the division problem as a multiplication problem, I've got the decision to make whether to implement just multiplying across on the top and on the bottom and then simplifying or doing this whole cross cancel thing. I think I'm just going to multiply across on the top and the bottom, keeping everything in alphabetical order. So when I do this in the numerator, I've got 20 a b cubed x squared y. Now, doing the same sort of thing in multiplying across in the denominator, we get 30 a cubed b cubed x y squared. And I think we'll be done in just one single step here. So 20 over 30 reduces to 2 thirds. A over A cubed cancels to leave us with A squared in the denominator. B cubed over B cubed just gets eliminated completely because those are exactly the same. Uh, X squared over X leaves us with an X in the numerator. And then Y over Y squared leaves us with a Y in the denominator. So this is our final answer, 2X over 3A squared Y. Moving to example seven. This time they're asking us to multiply a trinomial over a trinomial times a binomial over a binomial. And if I were to multiply a cross on the top and a cross on the bottom, I'm gonna end up getting just this really big, huge, expanded polynomial. And it's gonna be very difficult to try to simplify that. So what I'm gonna do here, it's, it's a very different approach. I'm going to factor wherever possible. I'm going to factor the top left, the top right, the bottom left, and the bottom right looks like it's already factored. But once I do this, I'm hoping that there are factors common to the top and the bottom. So really, your, your success in this technique is uh, how good your factoring is. So top left, x squared plus 2x minus 8. I believe that's going to be x plus 4x minus 2. In the denominator of that same fraction, we have x squared plus 4x plus 3, which is x plus 3, x plus 1. Now at this point, there are no factors that are common to the top and the bottom. But as I move to the upper right, I can take a 3 out of that binomial. And when I take the 3 out, I'm left with x plus 1. And the denominator can't be factored, but it's x minus 2. And now I'm going to let the fun begin. The x plus 1 on the bottom left is going to cancel with the x plus 1 on the upper right. The x minus 2 on the upper left is going to cancel with the x minus 2 on the lower right. And now I'm left with my final answer. And that includes a 3 on the top along with the uh, x plus 4. So 3 and then x plus 4. And downstairs or in the denominator is just x plus 3. And I prefer to leave my answer like this in fully factored form. It really lets the reader know that there are no additional things that can be canceled out. So I like to leave my answer in fully factored form. Many textbooks in the back of a book might distribute this three back through, but I personally like it completely factored. Okay, our last example for the slide is a division question. And like we saw in the problem above it in number six, Dividing by a fraction is like multiplying by its reciprocal. So my first maneuver is going to be to rewrite this as a multiplication problem. Now I'm going to factor everywhere possible. The first fraction looks pretty um, factored already. It's the second fraction that I'm going to be able to do a lot. The upper right appears to me to be a difference of two squares. And the bottom right just looks like a fast factoring of a trinomial. So I'm going to go ahead and factor both the, up, uh, the upper right and the lower right. Okay, so I've now factored the upper right and the lower right, and I notice that a lot of things are going to cancel, so it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, the A plus 3 on the bottom left is going to cancel with the A plus 3 on the upper right, and the A minus 3 on the upper right is going to cancel with the A minus 3 on the lower right. So it seems to me like we're just left with a plus 2 over a plus 4. 
And every year that I do this problem with my students, there are always a few students who want to cancel the A's out. And that's just not a legal maneuver. You're allowed to cancel out factors from the top and the bottom. And factors, remember, are things that are multiplied together. But you can't cancel out terms. And remember that terms are things that are either added or subtracted. So A and 2 on the top are terms. And A and 4 on the bottom are also terms. Terms cannot be canceled, only factors can be canceled. So our final answer is A plus 2 over A plus 4. So on this slide we talked about multiplying and dividing rational expressions. And I gave you a variety of ways to think about it. One way would be to just multiply across on the top and the bottom and then simplify. Or you could implement cross canceling, but that sometimes gets a little messy and organization and neatness are critical. And then when the uh, expressions become more complicated and factoring is involved, that might be your ticket is to factor everywhere possible in the hopes that factors common to the top and the bottom cancel out.